everybody welcome to my kitchen tonight we're making some chicken fingers this is a video that I have been just aching to share with you for like at least two years but something has always come up on chicken nugget or chicken finger night so tonight I'm gonna to share one of my favorite recipes that I like to make um, made of cornflakes and chicken breasts so here's what you're gonna need you're gonna need four cups of your favorite cornflakes about a pound and a half of boneless, skinless chicken breasts. You're gonna want a half a cup of milk and we just use the 2% milk. Two large eggs. A teaspoon of sugar or if you are not consuming sugar, perhaps something, some sort of an alternative would work for you. One teaspoon of smoked paprika. Now this is not to be confused, my friends, with uh, regular paprika. The smoked actually has a very different uh, flavor. If you need help locating where you can get this, please let me know. I know it's not available everywhere. A quarter teaspoon of onion powder. A quarter teaspoon of black pepper and a half a teaspoon of kosher salt. You're also going to want some olive oil for spritzing of the pan and on top of your chicken fingers. So let's get started. Some of the tools we're gonna need today, we're gonna need, want our large bar pan or something similar for baking it on. Um, we're gonna be using tonight our, our uh, nesting, dipping tool and um, our coating set. And I'm going to be using our manual food processor for getting these cornflakes and these spices all pulverized and mixed together. We're also going to want to have somewhere um, to cut your chicken breasts on. And a really good sharp knife for cutting those chicken strips up. That's probably the key component in this entire recipe, the sharp knife. Let's preheat our oven right now to 425 degrees. I'm just going to add some of our cornflakes to our manual food processor. of that making them into something very similar to a breadcrumb. At this point we can go ahead and start adding our spices. We'll add a few more cornflakes. Spreading it around your manual food processor, trying not to <laughs> get it into the little hole of your blade. As you can see, that's starting to come together very nicely. just go ahead and add the rest until it's completely pulverized. Once in a while you might even want to hold on really tightly to the lid and the base and just give it a shake just to stir it around and make sure that any uh, big bits that are trapped under the blades are getting exposed. And I just added the sugar since I had forgotten that as well and I'll just mix that in. So now that we're finished making our breadcrumbs, or breadcrumbs, <laughs> we're going to take our dipping trays. Let's just talk about them very quickly. So they nest. There's three different sizes. They all very conveniently snap together so that, oops, so that um, there's no dripping involved. Okay. 
when you're going from liquid to maybe flour to some to coating, nothing is dripping onto your counters. It's just very, very smooth. This set also comes with a tool. Now, tool could be used for dipping or whatever, whatever in. I personally, let's be honest, I do not love this tool for anything but this feature. So this feature it, I use for dipping candy in or um, like cake balls. So this works very, very nicely. And just let me demonstrate if this was a cake ball, as you can see, it holds it very nicely for moving it dish to dish. This side, it's, it's handy in a pinch. I mean, if you've got nothing else, but just being honest, it's not my favorite, but it is still delicate enough. Like it's still pinches enough that I am comfortable with it holding my raw egg here. All right, let's get started. Uh, so we're gonna take our egg, our said egg, <laughs> whoops. And we're gonna break that into our largest bowl. And again, and oh my goodness, I'm glad we broke those first because we do have eggshells. Little tip, pro tip, use your other eggshells to very quickly and easily fish out the little bits of eggshells. For some reason, they stick to themselves much easier than if you were to use your finger or a fork. So just like that, we have been able to successfully remove all the little bits. Okay, in our next compartment, oh, we missed one. We missed one. Let's get that out. There. Um, we're also going to, sorry, in the big one, we're going to add our half a cup of milk and we're just going to whisk that up. A fork will do, or if you happen to have a little whisk. This is actually one of our little retired sauce whisks from Pampered Chef. If you're lucky enough to have one of these, hang on to it for dear life. They don't make them anymore. Oh, it sounds like our oven has finished its preheating cycle. Okay. So I did forget to mention that we are only going to be using two of our sections today. So we'll just put this little guy away. In our next section, we are going to put into, put these breadcrumbs in there. Actually, maybe we will use this just for extra holding room. Maybe like a final dip, because it seems to have collected a lot of the powder down here. So maybe it'll be a good thing. Maybe it works out for the best. So now I'm going to carefully set these aside because I have to prepare our chicken breast. Let's put that over here. So warning, warning to my lovely friends who do not like seeing me handle raw chicken. Yes, that means you. <laughs> you know who you are. You may want to uh, pause the video and uh, move ahead. <laughs> or watch the horror and take fold as we are about to cut into some chicken breasts. So I am only going to be using three of these uh, chicken breasts and I will end up uh, storing these other two for a future use. All right. So here we go. So I've talked about this in the past about do you rinse your chicken or do you not? It is you know, an old uh, wives tale that you have to rinse your chicken. That's another discussion for another day. We, however, are not, but we are most definitely going to have our antibacterial soap ready for some serious washing when we're done. So we're going to take a chicken breast, just like this. This is how they come. If you're lucky enough to still have that chicken tender attached under there, that little Thing that people pay so darn much for there it is we're just gonna start by taking that right off 
easy peasy there is a chicken strip and if you have any little fatty pieces on there go ahead and just cut those off from there we're just going to put a slit in here which is actually going to just and just keep slitting a little bit very very gently slit slit can you see how i'm doing that just putting a few little slits as i kind of open this guy up this is why a very sharp knife is so necessary for making any kind of uh delicate cuts like this so see how i just butter this is called butterfly or chicken breast now we've made it into this nice large surface that we'll be easily able to cut into our fingers just go ahead and trim off any fat bits because we definitely don't want those in our chicken fingers I'm running out of time on my video, so I'm going to go quick. I'm just going to show you how to cut. So just think about how big you want your chicken strip. And you're just going to start making those cuts. So there's one. And I kind of made it to match that other tender I was just talking about. I'll just set that aside. Keep going through, trying to keep them as evenly as possible. Sometimes that's not possible. This guy, I'm actually going to do like a diagonal cut like that. You want to try your best to get them even. This guy's a little bit fat on this side, so go ahead and butterfly it a little bit. So just a little slit, and a little slit, and a little slit, just until it's a little bit thinner. That way it's going to cook evenly. Do you see what I did there? I'll show you one more time. Cut off the tender and then just kind of butterfly it by making a slit and kind of holding your fingers in there to kind of and slit and slit and slit and slit. Doesn't have to be perfect. And we'll do the same for the other side. Just slit, slit. See how it's it's a little bit like doing chicken, <laughs> chicken surgery. <laughs> and then cut your strips. Easy peasy. If you are not super comfortable butterflying it, don't worry. You don't even have to do that. You could totally chop it into sections and make chicken nuggets. Too easy. So now that the chicken's all cut up into strips, we're going to take our kitchen spritzer pump it full of air and spritz your large bar pan just so that nothing sticks to it and we're ready to get started. So I'm going to set that aside. So how this works is you take your tongs, either these ones or some regular tongs. I'm going to be using my favorite, my small tongs. We're just going to dip it into our egg and uh, milk mixture let it drain off a little bit and then straight over to your cornflake crust and just make sure it gets covered just kind of turn it around there and then straight over to your bar pan so you guys this is going to bake in the oven at 425 degrees for about 12 maybe 15 minutes just depending how thick you cut it you're totally going to want to have one of these guys or some sort of meat thermometer because you want to make sure your chicken reaches an internal temperature of 165 degrees. So this is our, our, uh, our instant read thermometer by Pampered Chef. Awesome, awesome investment. Best investment of your whole kitchen if you ask me because there's nothing better than safe meat. So one more time, very quickly, take your chicken's finger. Dip it in your egg milk mixture, over to cornflakes, coat, and over to your bar pan. So I'll take pictures and share with you what they look like when we're done. All right, bye for now. Thanks for cooking with me. See ya.